Welcome to this video about the basic postdoc test. I will discuss which test that is most appropriate to use. I recommend that you first watch the videos about the individual postdoc tests before you watch this video. We will begin by comparing the following postdoc tests based on simulation studies. We will end this video by discussing which postdoc test to select depending on your aim and experimental design. Let's have a look at how the tests perform on a few simulated datasets. In the first example, we do 10 separate independent t-tests. Each dataset is randomly drawn from a normal distribution with the same mean and a standard deviation of 2. The null hypothesis of equal means is therefore true for all 10 tests. For each of the 10 comparisons, we compute a p-value from an unpaired t-test which assumes equal variance between the two groups. If the p-value is less than 0.05, this means that we will reject the true null hypothesis, which means that we have made a type 1 error. We then simulate the new dataset and compute 10 t-tests again. Every time we make at least one type 1 error, we make a note about this. We repeat this process 10,000 times and calculate the percentage of times where we make at least one type 1 error. By using 10 individual t-tests without correcting for multiple comparisons, we expect to make at least one type 1 error in 40% of the 10,000 simulations. The expected family-wise error rate is therefore 40%. This table shows the computed family-wise error rate for the 10,000 simulations, in which each simulation involved 10 independent t-tests. Since we use random numbers in every simulation, we will not get the family-wise error rate of exactly 40%. As can be seen, this simulation resulted in a family-wise error rate of 41% of the independent t-tests. However, by applying the Bonferroni or the Holmes test, the family-wise error rate stays around the expected level of 5%. As we have seen in the previous videos, the family-wise error rate will be identical for Holmes' test and Bonferroni when all the null hypotheses are true, since the smallest adjusted p-value will be identical in the two methods. Note that Tukes, Fisher's LSD and Danette's test are not appropriate for this kind of comparison since they are mainly used for comparing three or more groups. In this example, we will compare all possible pairs of five groups. The simulations are performed based on the fact that the null hypothesis is true, which means that all groups have the same mean. In this example, we'll compare all possible pairs of five groups. The number of tests we make can be calculated by the following equation, where A is the number of groups. We see that we can make 10 pairwise comparisons if we have five groups. Note that the tests are no longer independent, since each group is involved in four tests. For example, group A is compared to B, C, D and E. We make 10,000 simulations where the null hypothesis is true and calculate how many of those 10,000 simulations that involve at least one type 1 error. Here are the results from such simulations. We see that the family-wise error rate of the 10 tests has been reduced from 41% to 28% because the tests are no longer independent. Since we use a significance level of 5%, the ANOVA rejects the null hypothesis in about 5% of the simulations, just as we would expect. Since the null hypothesis is true in this example, the LSD method results in the exact same family-wise error rate of 5.1% as the ANOVA. The LSD method is therefore protected by the ANOVA when the null hypothesis is true. If we would run the LSD method without the protection from the ANOVA, which is then simple t-tests with pooled variance, the LSD method would then result in about the same family-wise error rate as the t-tests. Bonferroni and Holmes tests that are run directly on the data result in a family-wise error rate that is decreased from 4.8% to 3.6%, when the tests are dependent, and if they are performed only after a significant ANOVA, they result in a family-wise error rate of about 3.5%.
This means that in 16% of the simulations we get inconsistent results where we obtain a significant ANOVA but where all postdoc tests turn out to be non-significant. We'll come back to this later. Tukey's test that is run after a significant ANOVA results in a family-wise error rate of 4.4% and 5.1% if we run the test also for a non-significant ANOVA. Tukey's test might therefore also identify a non-significant difference after a significant ANOVA. However, this is less likely to happen compared to Holm and Bonferroni correction in this example. We'll here have a look at an example where there are no way significant, but where the postdoc tests are not. For example, computing an ANOVA for the following example data results in a p-value of 0.01. However, none of the pairwise comparisons result in a p-value that is less than 0.05. Therefore, the NOVA tells us that not all means are equal, but when we perform the postdoc tests with the Bonferroni correction, we fail to identify any significant differences between the means. The opposite might also happen. For this example data, the NOVA result is non-significant, but the postdoc test identifies a significant difference between A and D. Depending on your aim, you can run postdoc tests except for Fisher's LSD method, even though the ANOVA is non-significant, because most postdoc tests control the family-wise error rate. If your aim is to make only pairwise comparisons, the ANOVA is still useful to run before the postdoc tests, because a lot of postdoc tests make use of the MSC output from the ANOVA. If your aim is to only analyze if there is a difference between all groups, you should only run the ANOVA without further postdoc tests. We'll here run a similar simulation as before, where A, B, C and D have equal means, but where group E clearly differs from the other means. The ANOVA should therefore correctly be rejected in every simulation, since not all means are equal. Only 6 out of the 10 hypotheses are now true. Note that, out of the 10 comparisons, only 6 comparisons now involve simulated data where the null hypothesis is true, and 4 comparisons where the null hypothesis is false. Here are the results from 10,000 simulations of such data. We see that the family-wise error rate has been reduced from 28% to 20% because only 6 out of the 10 hypotheses are now true. Note that the LSD method has now increased the family-wise error rate from about 5% to 19% because it is no longer protected by the ANOVA since the ANOVA is rejected in every simulation. This example shows why Fisher's LSD method is not appropriate to use when we have more than 3 groups if we like to keep the family-wise error rate below 5%. The family-wise error rate of the Bonferroni method has been reduced from 3.6% to 2.3% since it assumes that all hypotheses are true. Even though one hypothesis is clearly false, the p-values are adjusted by the factor of 10 even though it is clear in this case that only 6 hypotheses are true. Holmes' test now results in a family-wise error rate that is much greater than the Bonferroni method since its correction is mainly put on the lower p-values and less on the p-values associated to true null hypotheses. Since Tukey's test assumes that all null hypotheses are true, the family-wise error rate is now much lower than 5% in this example. We'll now end this lecture by trying to figure out which postdoc test to use. Note that this is based on my personal opinion and that there are a lot more postdoc tests to select from. This flowchart only includes the tests that we have discussed in this lecture. Also, remember to check the assumptions for the tests before you use them. Ok, so this is how I would select between the tests. If you only have 3 groups, I would choose Fisher's LSD test after a significant ANOVA because it has the greatest power, but still keeps the family-wise error rate at 5%. If you have more than 3 groups, and want to compare all possible pairs between the groups, I would select either Holmes or Tukey's test. If you need a confidence interval, Tukey's test should be selected, since Holmes' test cannot be used to compute confidence intervals. If you do not want to compare all possible pairs between the groups, 
I would use Danette's test if only the control is compared to the treatments. However, if we like to compare predefined pairs, we could either use Bonferroni if confidence intervals are required, or Holmes test if we do not need confidence intervals to report the results. If we need to perform hundreds or thousands of comparisons, or if we deal with an explanatory study, a test that is based on the forced discovery rate rather than a family-wise error rate is more appropriate. We'll discuss tests that are based on the forced discovery rate in another video. Also, for non-parametric tests, Dunn's tests can be used. For multiple comparisons based on a repeated meshes design that might be performed after a significant repeated meshes ANOVA, one can for example use multiple pair T tests or the corresponding non-parametric test and adjust the p-values by the Holmes method. In another lecture, we'll have a look at other types of poster tests that control the forced discovery rate instead of the family-wise error rate. See you soon and good luck with your own calculations.